Hello, good morning, and welcome to your day four vlog. So today's day four of Panelathon. This is the halfway day. I am killing it so far, if I do say so myself. I feel like I am reading tons of graphics, and again, loving most. I've got top knot here today, so if you see random little weird things like that, that's what's going on. But anyhow, so today, what I've already read. Let's go over that. So. I, for whatever random reason, woke up at 5 in the morning this morning. So, I've been up since 5. I'm very tired. Um, Hubs and I just did dinner last night, and then when we got home, I just played video games. So, no reading really happened till late, but I did read one thing before bed, and then one thing after I woke up at 5. So, the thing I read when I woke up at 5 is a digital um, manga release. Well, I'm picking this one up digitally, I should say. And that is Ten Dance. Now, this is about two ballroom dancing men. One is great in standard dance, the other is great in Latin dance, and they want to compete in the Ten Dance, which is competing in both categories, essentially. So they're trying to teach each other, like, their tips and tricks because they're kind of the tops in their areas in both arenas. So it is so good. It is so well drawn. I feel like the art style is that great mesh between the two other ballroom dancing manga series that I've read. It takes the things I loved from one and the things I loved from the other and combined them into one. And it is just so good. I really enjoy the slow character progression, but there's very clearly like sexual tension between these two dudes. And I'm kind of here for it. It's kind of awesome. Highly recommend if you're interested in anything along those lines. Let me go grab my other read from last night. Because I read 10 Dance at, after I woke up at 5 in the morning and realized I couldn't go back to sleep. So, <laughs> anyways, so last night before bed, I read Isola Volume 1, which was kind of a trip. You're only given, like, a little bit of information before you're really dropped in this story and it's definitely not bad it's good it's interesting I do think I'll continue but this is really hard to sum up essentially this is a queen and the captain of the guard who are on the run because the prince was trying to kill the queen and the captain of the guard comes in kills the prince and they're both on the run so everybody assumes the queen is dead at this point no one knows where the captain of the guard is. And people are kind of after them for all sorts of reasons that I don't understand yet. But the art is absolutely stunning. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I thought it was so beautiful. So again, that is one I will be picking up. So today, my focus outside of these two things is going to be six volumes of manga again. <laughs> Those are the ones that I'm going to take to work. So I'm taking volumes 9 through 12 of... Assassination Classroom with me to work. I'm also taking Blank Canvas by Akiko Higashimura because Natalie and I are supposed to read that today. And I'm going to take Requiem of a Rose King Volume 1, which showed up in my haul two days ago. But I'm I'm kind of craving some vampires after reading Vanitas the other day. I might do some shopping this weekend. We don't know. We'll see what happens. But Kodansha is having a digital sale right now on some of my favorite di digital titles. So I will leave the link to where all the info is down below. But some of the series from that sale that I recommend are Peach Heaven, LDK, Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. So those are just three off the top of my head that I know are on the list. But I will leave all the full recommendations in the description down below. So definitely go check out this sale because a lot of them you can get the first volume for a dollar. So you can buy the first volume, try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to keep collecting it, obviously. But these are just some of my favorites. Oh, My Pink is Overflowing is on that list, so if you haven't tried it yet, there is a First Impressions video that I've done on that, so I will leave that down below as well. But yes, there's, there's some really great gems, because they're love-based, because it's springtime, headed into summer, summer loving kind of thing. So definitely check out the sale. Like I say, everything you need to know is in the description. So, yes, that's kind of the plan for today. Um, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning now. I probably should have done my makeup this morning, but my skin's not been very happy lately, so I'm just kind of letting it breathe lately. That's why I haven't been wearing too much 
I'll probably at least do like concealer, eyeliner, mascara today, but yeah, that's kind of the plan. Hi, hello. So I'm back and I just finished volume one of Requiem of the Rose King and I have a lot of interesting thoughts about it, but hold on for a minute. I thought somebody was going to walk in, so we're still good. But yes, so Requiem of Rose Queen, Rose King. Ugh, I can't talk. So as of right now, we have Richard here and Richard is our main character. But Richard has a secret. <laughs> Richard is not like everybody else. Richard is called Demon Spawn. It makes my heart sad that that's how Richard is referred to at this point. I can't explain why without spoilers, so I'm not going to. But I am thoroughly invested in this story at this point. And this is a heavy series. This is one that I don't think I could binge necessarily because it's darker. It's... Not like, it's not like Golden Comedy where it's graphically violent, but it's tough. And I honestly, uh, it's just well done. The art is beautiful. The story is well fleshed out. I am seriously like happy that I read this and picked it up on my friend's recommendations. I have no idea how long it's going to be. I know there's 10 published volumes out, I believe, but I will be picking up more of that. But I think that's going to be one of my slower collects just because it's darker and deeper and you know there's only 10 volumes out so far and I don't know how long it's going to be but it's definitely got paranormal elements to it highly recommend it's fun I really enjoy it so yes I've touched base with Natalie we are on to Buddy Reed blank canvas today so I am going to start that next so I'm sure I will have lots of thoughts I do plan on taking notes while I read this because um, now he's going to be out of service for a good chunk of the day. And so we're going to just touch base later when she's got service back. And yes, so that's the plan. So far, so good today. That's three reads in, and I'm happy with that. Even if I only get blank canvas in and nothing else, I'll be really happy with today just because that's still four things in a day, and that's really good. And I've got plenty of time this weekend to read, so... I have a feeling I'm going to run out of graphics, <laughs> at least my physical graphics, which is fine. I do have some digitally that I've got that I can read and some things like that. But yeah, all is well. All is good. Chat with you soon. This just happened and I am so on board for the entire series. Um, this is definitely autobiographical of Akiko Higashimura's life. Right now we're seeing her high school age doing college entrance exams to get into art school. And I'm loving it so much. It's been really interesting. She had a mentor who was pretty gruff with her. But you can see that high school Akiko needed this sensei very much. And so it's really been a fun journey to watch the art change and grow as she got older. You know, because there's a direct comparison of, like, childhood drawings to what she draws now. And it's really interesting. I just really am loving it. So the other thing I brought with me is Assassination Classroom. I've got four volumes of that. Volumes 9 through 12, I believe they are. Yes, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Yep. And... Whatever I get rid of that today is gravy. <laughs> I probably won't do another check-in until I finish up here at work, which my last appointment's showing up at 5, so 5.30ish, I think. Unless something, like, traumatic happens. So, cue the B-roll now.
So I had a package come and it is my Bubbles and Books box. This is a book subscription box where it comes with a romance novel and a bunch of bath related items. So I figured I would just unbox it in this vlog since this vlog isn't gonna be overly exciting. So let's go ahead and dig right in. I've already cut it and stuff, so makes it a little easier. The title of this book is called Sunshine and Daisies. Not the book, the box, sorry. I don't know what the book is. It's buried in the bottom. Wormies. So the first thing here, it looks like a candle. No. Sugar scrub cubes. Ooh, and it's orange blossom. These are from the island bath. So dampen skin, place one scrub in the palm of your hand and rub onto wet skin, rinse well. Hmm. I can't quite smell through the freshness seal, so let me. Oh, that is so orangey yummy. Like, these are gonna be so nice. And then we've got a little candle here from Home Sweet Homemades on Etsy. So it's like a little sampler tea light candle and it's sun ripened peach. So that's what the package looks like. That's smeller. Smelly, smelly. Mmm. That's definitely like peaches and something else. Something else sweet. That it, it's not just straight peach. It's something else too. But whatever it is, I like it. So this is obviously very citrusy, which I'm totally down with. So bath bomb dust. Ooh, I love it when they send this. Because last time I got a little bag, but this is like a big Ziploc bag. This is from sweetforfuel.com, handmade bath bakery. So this is mixed berries, fresh, fresh florals, and herbalicious light musk. I can't smell it through the plastic very well, and it is sealed. So it does have witch hazel in it for sure. So if that's like a triggering like allergy thing for you, I thought you should know, but but yeah, this is the sprung up bath bomb dust. I promise to let you know how this smells when I actually like put it in the bath. We got one more item and then the book. And it's our actual like bath bomb this time. And this is from Southern Fleek Bath and it's called My Daisy. Oh, it's even got a cute little, like, daisy in the imprint. How fun. And that just smells like fresh daisies from outside. That smells really yummy. All right, last but not least is the book. I picked the Mystic box, so I get the Paranormal Romance book. I haven't read this, the one from my previous box yet, but I do plan on reading that during Smutathon. I will probably add this to it as well. Because this is a two-in-one Legendary Wolf and Legendary Beast by Barbara J. Hancock. So, I, like Red Riding Hood and Beauty and the Beast, I think? Oh, lordy, this is going to be fun. So let's, two shapeshifter brothers and the tough women they love. Oh, oh I'm so all over this. Um, so let's see. Legendary Wolf, this is the description for it because this is a two-in-one so these are harlequin nocturne novels so we've got two different ones the first one being legendary wolf and that says once upon a time anna was an orphan girl her only friend a shifter then the red wolf soren romanov oh goodness learned that the girl he loved was the daughter of his family's greatest foe now grown and beginning to master her own power and and Anna knows that only Soren can help her stop a great evil, but he'll have to trust the woman and the witch she's become. Ooh, this is going to be fun. And then Legendary Beast says, Madeline Romanov, oh, so the Romanov is the girl this time, okay, was trapped in an enchanted sleep, her baby wrapped tight in her arms. Oh. Then the white wolf woke her and her son disappeared. For centuries, Lev Romanov searched for his wife and their child, and the search drove him half mad. Can he now be the man he needs to be to help Madeline save their son? Ooh. Couples with history is such a trope that I'm like all here for and all in for. So yes, this will definitely be read during Smutathon. 
because both of these sound right up my alley and fantastic. They're each a little over 300, so they're decent length. So this will be a nice, honestly, I could probably knock it out in a day here at work as long as it was a quieter day. So anyways, yes. So that is the Bubbles and Books Mystic Box for the month of May. And I will leave a link to where you can order it down below. I will leave their website down below. I'm not sponsored. They don't send me the box for free. I pay for the box. I just like the box so far. All the bath products that I used last time, I really enjoyed. So I'm excited to try these ones out because they all seem to be a little more on the natural side of things. So I do like that. That's definitely a plus for me. So yeah, that's what came in my box. I thought you guys might like seeing that in a vlog instead of in a separate dedicated video like I did last time. Hey guys, so sorry, I'm a little cold, so I've got a jacket on here, but I, it's about 4.20. I've got a little bit of time left at work, but I did finish these four volumes of Assassination Nation Classroom, which are volumes nine, 10, 11, and 12. So, um, I'm liking where the story's going, but I can understand how people would kind of get bored with the series, I guess you could say at this point. And I'm sure a lot of people dropped off right around here and then came back like right at the very end. So, like I get it. I totally understand why people would feel that way. Cause it feels like the story line to assassinate Kuro Sensei is kind of like, backed off a little bit and they're kind of focused on other assignments which are in in essence training them honing their assassination skills so i'm interested to see how the next eight volumes go because i think that's all that's left it's 21 volumes long and i just finished 12 so 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20, 20, 20 nine more volumes so i'm past the halfway point um, I'm still enjoying it, not quite as much as I was initially, but I'm still enjoying it enough that I do want to continue to physically collect it. So, um, next time I run by the bookstore, I'll see if they have volume 13 and pick that up. Um, this one is one that is easy for me to like put down and not read for a while and then come back to and really enjoy. So I'll probably slowly collect the next like four volumes and then do a binge read kind of like today. Um, that seems to work really well with me for this series because then I get momentum with the series again for a bit and enjoy the story for a while. But, yep, that's kind of where I'm at. Sales calls. I understand people got to do their job, but that was very clearly, like, nothing but a sales call. They didn't even know my name, which I'm the owner of my business, if you're unaware at this point. But, yeah, so... I'm not sure if I'm going to wrap the vlog here, if I'm going to read a little more. I've got one more client that's going to show up closer to five. So I've still got a little bit of time. So maybe I'll read some more Space Boy. I really was enjoying what I read so far. So I think maybe I'll read some more chapters of Space Boy. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll read some more Space Boy. Okay, friends, so real quick, we are back in the same scenario here as the end of the previous vlog, wrapping up the day. So let's talk about the two things I read digitally. First, I read volume one of Ten Dance, which was really fun. I really enjoy this read. Definitely highly recommend checking it out if it sounds remotely interesting to you at all. And secondly, I read like another almost 20 chapters of Space Boy. It continues to get more and more amazing each time I dig into that webcomic. So believe me, I will continue to be digging into that one more and more as the week and weekend go on. Then I read the next four volumes, nine through 12 of Assassination Classroom. I can understand why people would feel like this is a lull. I personally don't feel it's that way. 
maybe it gets worse a little further in, but right now I'm still enjoying it. I will still continue to physically collect this one. And then I read volume one of A Requiem of a Rose King. This is going to be really interesting to see where this goes, because I've heard it's vampires. I didn't see any vampires in this one, but there's definitely paranormal stuff going on in the story. Talk of characters being demon spawn and stuff. It's really interesting. Definitely check this one out. And then I read The Gloriousness That Is Blank Canvas, my not so at my so-called artist journey by Akiko Higashimura. This is definitely an autobiographical story for her. And we're mostly dealing with her as she's starting her entrance exams to go to an art school. Really interesting. Again, I love Higashimura's art. And it's really interesting because she does have childhood art within it. And so it's really interesting to have the direct comparisons in the manga. So it's really fun to see how far she's come and how far she's grown. And it's just fabulous. I really love it. And then I, last but not least, I read Isola, which is by Brendan Fletcher and Carl Kershaw. I'm sure there's more people involved, but those are the two listed on the front. And this is a fantastical graphic novel where we're dealing with a queen and a captain of the guard. The queen... There was an attempted murder on the queen. The captain of the guard saves the queen, and they're kind of on the run now, and it's really interesting. Thoroughly enjoy it. So, friends, that is the end of my day four vlog for Panelathon for you. Again, thank you guys so much for always checking out these vlogs. You're all so wonderful, and I really appreciate everything you guys do and all of the support that you guys give my channel. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite thing you've read this week is so far, and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.